What do you enjoy? Make a list and go to it whenever you need a boost. And I'm going to tell you one of the best things I have ever done. Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Hello there, and welcome to a Thursday. Yes, it is still April. <laughs> Only one, minute, one, one day left, though. It is April 30th, 2020. Day 228 of Gotta Get on Ellen. And we are on day 18 of hashtag Hopefulness Challenge. Are you taking the challenge? Are you feeling better? Are you following the prompts? Are you taking the suggestions? Are you feeling better? Boy, I sure hope so. Well, I'm going to jump right in and tell you about one of the best things I have ever done. This has been a game changer in my life. If you recall, a couple of weeks back, I decided to make working out a non-negotiable. Now, I know myself, and I know that if I forced myself to do it five days a week, I wouldn't do it. I would get tired of doing it. I would feel overwhelmed. I would just not want to do it every day. So I made Monday, Wednesday, and Friday my workout days, and they are non-negotiable. It is the best thing I ever did. Here's why. There is no decision making. There is no guilt when I decide to put it off for one more day. I get it done. There's no thinking about it. All right. It's Monday. I got to work out today. And what I've been doing is, and this is helping as well, I believe, I have a number of home full body workouts, which are very cardio intense uh, that I have been shuffling through. But in between, you know, I have these bye bye arms. And, you know, honestly, I don't think they're going anywhere. I don't think there's really anything I can do at this point to make them less bye bye. But I keep trying. So I've been doing like an arm workout in between the home full body workouts and the arm workouts aren't really cardio based. So that's helping me as well because it's like that one day every other time I work out, I don't really even have to get into my little workout outfit and put my sneakers on or whatever. Like I just throw on a sports bra, keep the pants on that I've been wearing and and do my, my strength workout for my arms. It doesn't work up a huge sweat. It's kind of a little break in the middle of the, you know, gung-ho, let's sweat our butt off type of workout. And let me tell you, Monday's workout that I did, I was sweating like I don't think that I have sweat (laughs) in years. I mean, it was just dripping off of me. And that actually makes me feel good because I know it was a good workout, a really, really good workout. And then, you know, you're kind of proud of yourself for the rest of the day. Instead of getting up Monday morning and being like, oh, I don't feel like it. Yeah, guess what? I still never feel like it. But you know what? That doesn't even come into it anymore. It doesn't matter if I feel like it. I'm doing it. Now, I will tell you this. I did put off my Wednesday workout to Thursday last week because, I don't know if you remember me talking about this, Tucker had me up in the middle of the night twice because she was not feeling well. So we had to run her outside. We had some cleaning up to do, that kind of stuff. Uh, I was very tired. I probably gotten not even four hours of sleep for the entire night. So I just decided straight off the bat, I am not working out today. I will do it tomorrow. And I, that's what I did. So I just moved it from Wednesday to Thursday, which is not advisable, but special circumstances can be considered. Other than that, like I said, I don't even think about it anymore. doesn't matter if I feel like it. I just do it. 
And this is really good to keep in mind for anything that you want to stay committed to. This has been three weeks strong now. I don't remember the last time I have kept a consistent workout schedule for three weeks straight. Usually I go a week, take a little time off, do two weeks, then I take even more time off because I'm so proud of myself for going for two whole weeks. I'm telling you, it takes all the guilt out of it. It takes all of the deciding whether today's the day I'm going to do it. Pick the days and do it. But know yourself. Don't try to take on too much. If you try to take on too much, it will not work. Like I said, I am ecstatic because it's Thursday and I do not have to work out. (laughs) So excited. I don't have to work out today. So the days that I'm not working out, I'm very, very happy. And the days that I am working out, I'm very happy too because like I said, It's now a non-negotiable. I do it and I get on with my day. I usually do it as soon as I get my podcast done and then I have the rest of the day to do whatever it is that I would like to do. I would love for you guys to try this with the gratitude journal. I know many of you are still not doing it. I'm going to take it down to three. Three things. Three things each day that you are grateful for. Just make a decision to make it a non-negotiable. It's a decision. Just like with giving up the snooze alarm. I'm telling you, if you are a snoozer, it is one of the best things you will ever do is to stop hitting that snooze button for kind of the same reasons. You're putting yourself in a position first thing in the morning before you're really even awake as to making these big decisions like, Am I going to get out of bed now or am I going to hit the snooze button again? It's torture. It's really a form of torture. So make a decision and then make it a non-negotiable. Three things in a gratitude journal each day. Five minutes. If you can't think of three things in five minutes, you're off the hook for the rest of the day. Then you start over again the next day. Same time every day is usually what works best, but get it in when you can. Some exciting news. I went to Target yesterday. That's right. That's right. Call me a rebel. There really wasn't anybody there. They seem to be taking all kinds of the proper precautions. They were wiping down the carts. I had my mask on, my gloves, and the social distancing was not really an issue. Now, as I was coming up to the checkout line, I had planned to go to the self-checkout to not have to worry about any kind of contact at all. But there's a there was a guy, and he's like, I'm open, I'm open, open. He seemed very excited about having something to do. So, uh, And they had the shields up and everything. And I did get myself a non-essential, fabulous pair of sunglasses. And I will more than likely take a picture of them later to show you because – I have to wait for the sun to come out for me to actually use them. And that is not going to happen for some time. In fact, we're supposed to get horrific storms today. Uh, They're calling, and I don't know if I've ever seen this term before, training of heavy rain. Training of heavy rain. What does that mean? Well, they're saying it means it's it's cells of downpours. Localized flooding, that kind of thing. Heavy winds. Okay. Uh, Like I said, I've never heard of training of heavy rain before. But that's what we're going to get today. It sounds exciting, doesn't it? I can't wait. I just can't wait. Tomorrow, showers on and off throughout the day. Saturday looks good. But Saturday, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to partake in the sunshine because It is the day, two more days, to rise live with Rachel Hollis. Is anyone going to take part with me? $40. That's it. 40 bucks. Starts at 10 a.m. on the East Coast. Goes all day long. All day long. Now, there's other packages. You can get a $65 ticket, and then you will have access to the conference for seven days. You can go back and rewatch or watch any parts that you missed. I keep thinking maybe I should have should have gotten that package, but chances are I will not go back. So I have been delegated to my office. My husband wants no parts of it, 
that's fine. There is an hour lunch break, and there there is a happy hour dance party at the end. So I'm very excited about it. I think it's going to be a really cool thing. If you want to see a little bit why I am obsessed with Rachel Hollis and All Things Rise, this is a perfect opportunity to check it out. I think uh, it probably won't be as inspiring if you were there in person, but I think it's still going to be pretty darn inspiring. I think it's going to make you want to get up off your butt and start living your very best life. Today's topic, I wanted to hear about the ladies and your roots. What are you doing, ladies, to cover those roots, to hide those roots? Are they um, are they really bad, or are you one of the lucky ones that that just doesn't? It's just not that noticeable for them. So um, here are some of the things that you said. I am just wearing my hair in a bun for the most part. If I need to go out somewhere, I may put a hat on, and I do have the color spray. For if I do want to take some pictures of myself or something, um, but I'm having to use so much of it now that it's really kind of making my hair two-toned. But, you know, that's okay. That's kind of in style right now, right? So um, Connie agrees with the spray cover-up. That's what she's using. Lisa says she's not doing a darn thing to uh, cover her gray right now. Cecilia says, I gave in and finally did it myself with a box. Such a pain, messy, and never right. Oh, well, it was getting bad. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I talked to a girlfriend of mine, and she said she's about to do hers herself, too. And I don't think I could do it myself. I've, I've tried once or twice. It did not turn out well. And I just, that's why I'm willing to spend the money to go to the hair salon. Obviously not an option right now. I am certainly not the only one in that boat, but uh, I can't wait until my hairdresser uh, comes back and starts taking appointments again. It's got to be soon, right? It's got to be soon. All right, my my iPad is giving me a little bit of a hard time here. Moving on to today's blog post. We're talking about joy. I know I never talk about joy. I want you to make a list of things that you enjoy. Personal Growth Week, it is continuing here with doing more of the things that you love. Going hand in hand with yesterday's blog about discovering new interests, you should have a few things already in your repertoire that you go to on a regular basis. And I'm talking about your favorite things. After you come home from a long day, what is it that makes you feel relaxed, comforted, safe? Is it making yourself a good meal? Is it a glass of wine? Is it getting into your favorite jammies as soon as you get home? Is it lighting a scented candle? It can be anything that makes your day just a little bit better. Here is what makes me feel ultimate happiness and comfort. I love my new lounge pants. Love them. Did I mention they have pockets? I wear them all the time. I love having my dog by my side. I love getting a scented candle going or my warmer. I love my leopard print throw on my couch. It's comfy and warm. That bad boy is never folded up unless we have company because I use it all day and all night. If I'm on the couch, it's on me. I love when my husband gets home from work and I chat with him about how his day was. I love to get his dinner ready so it's waiting when he comes in the door. We then relax and watch TV together for the rest of the night. He likes to take his pants off when he gets home. Not Goldberg style. He doesn't walk around in his skivvies. He just changes into some sweatpants. But we get a real kick out of, he gets a real kick out of letting me know, I'm taking my pants off. It's like a ritual. It signals it's the end of the day. So then he'll sit back, watch a little more television while he winds down and gets his mind set for bedtime. What are some things that signal you that you are in your safe space when you get home? Your home should feel like the ultimate place of rest and relaxation, uh, rest and relaxation, that is. What can you do to make the most out of that? I also enjoy lots of little decorative lights. I light them up. They make me happy. 
How about